Welcome back. In this study, we're going to be looking at Newton's second law of motion, which relates acceleration to force. If you put a force on a mass, you, you can accelerate that mass. Uh, the bigger the mass, the harder it is to accelerate. So there is a relationship there. As one goes up, the other comes down. As one goes down, the other comes up. Uh, so we'll see that there, there's a relationship there. We're also going to be looking at uh, weight, what, what is weight, and also uh, friction. How does friction oppose uh, motion? So let's get started. So the first thing that Newton was able to write down was that the acceleration of an object is based upon the force exerted on that object. So if you were to take a basketball and throw it to someone, okay, the basketball at, at the beginning is not moving at all. So in order for that ball to leave your hand with any kind of speed, you'll have to accelerate it from zero to whatever speed that you want it to go. Remember that acceleration is the change in speed in a certain amount of time. Well, the way that you make that ball go faster than zero is that you shove that ball. You have to have a force on an object in order to cause an acceleration. Now, as, as soon as that ball leaves your hand, you can exert no more force on it. The only thing that's acting on the ball is gravity. There's the force of gravity that the earth is pulling on the ball, and all that'll do is send the ball down towards the ground. If, it, if you want a force, you're gonna maintain a force with your hand pushing on that ball, and as long as you are exerting a force, you are changing its velocity and you're making it accelerate. So Newton was able to write this down, that the acceleration is proportional to the force. So if you push harder, you're gonna make that ball go faster as it leaves your hand. If you push it slower, you're, uh, you're going to have a lower acceleration. Also, the mass has something to do with it. We'll see that in a minute. That the mass, the more massive a ball is, to, to throw a uh, basketball is easier than throwing a medicine ball that you use in weight training. So a corollary or something that's connected to this idea is friction. So if two things are shoving together, no matter how smooth they might appear, they're gonna have microscopic bumps on them and those bumps are acting like Velcro. So there's a stickiness to it or a resistance to motion. So you don't have something called a, a frictionless surface. Even ice has a certain amount of grit to it um, and that's the re way that you can actually, if you've ever gone ice skating, that's the reason you can actually push yourself off because there is a little bit of friction there. It's, a, it's very low and that's why you can glide around. Uh, you, your socks on the floor uh, is slicker than your tennis shoes on the floor. And so friction depends on the object that is grinding against to each other and the surface area of that object. Okay, so the friction on a crate on a wooden floor is less than on a rough floor. The rougher it is, the more that the, the uh, ridges are going to catch each other and resist friction. So another corollary is weight. Now your mass is how much matter you contain, what stuff is in you, okay? You've got a certain volume, whatever the volume of your body is, and you also have a certain amount of matter or material in it, okay? Some more than others, I know, I'm trying to work on that. In any case, when, when you have, you put a weight or a mass in a gravity field, the gravitational pull of the Earth on that mass is called weight, right? So your, your mass is going to be in kilograms. You weigh a certain amount of kilograms. In America, we're the only country in the entire planet that uses the old British system. The British don't even use the British system. We, they uh, used to use pounds and miles and stuff like that. Uh, we still do for whatever reason, we're stubborn. But the uh, metric system of matter of mass is in kilograms and a kilogram is your mass and it will be the same no matter where you are so if you are uh, on the moon your mass is exactly the same you don't change the amount of stuff you have by being at a different location but the moon is one-sixth the size of the earth and for that reason it pulls one-sixth as strong so you don't have as much weight on the, on the moon as you would on the Earth. If we were on Jupiter, which is 
multiple times more massive than the Earth, then you would have many, many times uh, heavier weight, uh, even though your mass doesn't change. Now we've already talked about inertia. Inertia is that resistance to changing in motion. An object in motion stays in motion. An object at rest stays at rest unless acted upon by another force. That's the basketball that you have to shove in order to throw it outside of your hand. So something that has more mass has more inertia. So mass is actually a measure of the inertia of it, and it has nothing to do, gravity doesn't affect it, it's just the amount of stuff that you have. The greater your inertia, the greater your mass. So it's easier to throw a ping pong ball than it is to throw a bowling ball. Okay, so kilogram is the unit of mass. Your weight is going to be the force of gravity acting on that. Uh, we'll see that the force of gravity is about 10. So it's gonna be 10 times your kilogram mass. Uh, and the unit uh, that, that we use in America is the pound. You, you are so many pounds of uh, weight. So this is a review slide. So mass is fundamental. It's something that's based upon you. Your weight is based upon where you are. So the more massive that the planet you're standing on, the more it's pulling, the heavier your weight. The less massive, the less it would pull, and your weight would change. So your weight uh, is based upon the gravitational pull. So if you were floating out in space uh, with no gravity pull at all, you would be weightless, but that doesn't mean that you don't have mass. So here's the first math that I'd kind of like you to look at. If you if you want your kilogram mass, you're gonna to have to divide your weight in pounds by 2.2. Think of it as just dividing in half, all right? So if you weigh 100 pounds, you're gonna have a 50 kilogram um, mass. If you weigh 200 pounds, you're gonna have a 100 kilogram mass. Your weight in the metric system is in Newtons, okay? Named after Isaac Newton, and essentially, it's 9.81 meters per second squared is the acceleration of gravity of the Earth. You can think of that as 10, just round it to 10. So it's gonna be 10 times your kilogram mass. So if you weigh 50 Newtons, um, if you weigh 50, I'm sorry, if your mass is 50 kilograms, then your weight is gonna be 50 times 10, which is 500 Newtons. 500 Newtons is your gravitational pull on your mass. Now, in Newton's formula, we see that in order to accelerate a mass, you put a force on it, okay? But if you increase the mass of an object with the same amount of force, you're gonna reduce the acceleration. They're related inversely. So the bigger the mass, the smaller the acceleration would be, okay? So think of it, you, put, you throw a baseball as hard as you can and it, it lands somewhere. You throw a softball as hard as you can and it'll land somewhere, it's a little bit bigger, and then you throw a bowling ball as hard as you can, and it won't go as far, because the more mass of the object, the more force it requires. So if you're throwing as hard as you can, you can't add any force with your arm, and the acceleration's not gonna be as much, and so the distance won't be as much. So mass is actually an opponent to acceleration. The more mass, the less acceleration. The smaller mass, the, the greater acceleration. Think about, um, that's why you put huge guys on the offensive uh, line on the football team because you want as much as you can to push back the others. And it's the reason why you put big guys on the defense because you have to have, it's harder to accelerate them than uh, if they're bigger. It's just the way it works. So three cheers for Isaac Newton. He was the first fella to actually put all this down into a book uh, not maybe not the first to to think about these ideas but the first to get credit for them so in more formal language this is what Newton wrote down the acceleration produced by a net force on an object is directly proportional to the net force is in the same direction as the net force and is inversely proportional to the mass of the object I'll show you in a second that I think of it in a much simpler way if you use math, believe it or not, it's a lot easier than using English when you're trying to understand relationships. So here's an equation that may be a little easier. The acceleration on an object is the force that you push on that object divided by how much 
mass it has. Okay? There's another way you could say it. You could say that the force on an object is equal to the mass of that object times its acceleration. So the second one, you see the acceleration is just solving for A. So you have F, which is your force, and you, the M is in the way, so you divide by M, and so you'd have acceleration equals force divided by mass. So you could solve, since this is, a, since this is an equation, you can solve for any of these three. Um, you could solve for mass by saying it's the, it's the force divided by the acceleration. You could solve for force by saying it's the product of the mass and the acceleration, or you could uh, solve for acceleration. It's the force divided by the mass. Pictures are helpful. So I've got a force, it accelerates a brick. So I'm pushing it a certain amount. If I push twice as hard, it's going to speed that brick twice as much, which means that it has twice as much energy when it leaves my hand, it has twice as much speed when it leaves my hand. That acceleration went from stopped brick to moving brick, okay? If you double the mass, okay, and you push with one hand, with that, whatever that force is, you're not gonna accelerate as much. You're gonna accelerate half as much. If you double your force and double your mass, then that would be the same as if you just, the same as the first picture, where you have a force and a mass. So if you doubled, doubled one and doubled the other, then your acceleration would be the same. So that is what you play with. That's, what, that's the ideas that you play with as you go up and down. What if I make it heavier? Is it gonna accelerate as much? Well, what if I use more force? Will it accelerate more? Those are your questions.